Welcome to the Macmillan Report. I'm Marilyn Wilkes, your host, and our guest is David Jackson, a professor of Spanish and Portuguese. His research interests include Portuguese and Brazilian literatures, modernist, vanguardist, and inter-arts literature, Portuguese culture in Asia, and ethnomusicology. Today we'll talk with Professor Jackson about a conference he recently organized entitled GOA, a post-colonial society between cultures. Welcome, Professor Jackson. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Goa. So, what gave you the inspiration to organize the conference? I did research in Goa starting 35 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, and have kept up my interest over the years within the category of the Portuguese uh, empire, the ex-Portuguese territories in Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought this would be an excellent opportunity uh, to bring together musicians, um, writers, uh, on Goa and to look into the condition and theme of Goa over its long existence as a part of the Portuguese world and now part of the Indian Union. Okay, and Goa is in India. It's a coastal Goa is, city in India. Goa correct? is on the west coast of India, <coughs> uh, about uh, 10 to 15 degrees uh, north of the equator on the Malabar coast. And a strategic location uh, for 450 years, a bit more, it was part of the Portuguese world mm -hmm. and was the capital of the so-called Portuguese India that extended from Mozambique on the Indian Ocean side all the way to Japan on the other. So it was quite a cosmopolitan administrative center uh, for hundreds of years. Okay, and give us an overview of the conference. Tell us uh, the title bit. of the conference, A Postcolonial Society on the one hand, uh, pointed out or was directed toward the idea that uh, the Portuguese world, the so-called Lusophone world, uh, has not yet really become part of the postcolonial debate, uh, which was really initiated and carried on more by Anglo-Indian scholars. And I thought it would be a very interesting idea to get the Portuguese focus involved in the whole topic of postcoloniality, mm -hmm. uh, particularly since the structure and nature of uh, Portuguese Indian society um, was different from the Anglo-Indian. Mm -hmm. uh, the second part, the between cultures, uh, points out the fact that uh, Goans have always lived among various cultures with a mixture of cultures, and that this condition, which one finds throughout the Portuguese world, uh, is an integral part of globalization of today. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to point out how the example of Goa, or the case of Goa, uh, predicted to a certain extent and could help inform uh, our views and studies of globalization. Okay, and who were some of the people who came to the conference? So I was able to contact several authors before. Uh, I have a Yale seminar I normally give called World Cities and Narratives. Mm -hmm. And for the book on Goa, I had used a novel titled Tivoleng by Victor Rangel Ribeiro. And uh, Mr. Rangel Ribeiro uh, got in touch with me. He actually lives in the United States uh, and helped to organize the conference. And uh, so through him, I was able to invite uh, Dr. Antonio Gomez, uh, a new novelist, uh, a cardiologist at Mount Sinai Hospital, a Goan uh -huh. who's been in New York for 40 years, who's now written a very interesting novel. And also I was able to invite Margaret Mascarenhas, a best-selling author, the Penguin uh, edition of Skin, uh, her novel about uh, Goa visited by various uh, nationalities and people from different parts of the world um, worked out. So I was able to have a round table with readings and discussion mm -hmm. with the three novelists, Victor Angel Ribeiro, Margaret Mascarenhas, and uh, Tony Gomez. Okay, very good. I'm interested in the cardiologist. What, what is his novel about? So his novel called The Sting of Peppercorns is set in 1961 uh, when uh, Portuguese uh, rule in Goa ended uh, and India was incorporated into, uh, I mean, Goa was incorporated into India. So his novel really is about that moment of invasion, incorporation, liberation, and so forth in mm -hmm. December of 1961. Okay, uh, let's talk about some of the highlights of the conference. Yes, um, in 2006, I had organized a conference called Portuguese World Music, mm -hmm. and uh, there were some Goan content in that conference. And Professor Victor Coelho from Boston University, who's a, a prominent Ludist uh, at that time played, and he suggested a concert for this concert uh, of religious music that was taken to Goa in the 17th century, and this would be Italian sacred music. Uh, so he played the theorbo, which is a very long-necked lute, mm -hmm. uh, and accompanied a male soprano, which is something that one almost never hears, uh, playing music of Carissimi and Capsburger, uh, two composers of the 17th century, uh, and this was in Dwight Chapel and with the acoustics and the soaring voices, mm -hmm. uh, it was really splendid. I think that was certainly one of the highlights of the conference. Okay, and what, did you have any, uh, did you um, 
encounter any surprises, something that you didn't anticipate during the conference? Well, there was uh, uh, an interesting sideline uh, when one of the speakers began talking about his Goan topic, then Dr. Gomez stood up and said, I think we're cousins. Mm. So uh, <laughs> many of the Goans discovered that they were related, and that was sort of the sub-theme that all Goans throughout the world have some uh, degree of kinship. It's just a matter of discovering what the contact is I with see. the relative, and that beca became a kind of humorous under-theme that, that uh, united uh, the members of the conference and mm -hmm. gave us all something more to talk about. So why do you think it's important to do conferences like this? Well, in this case, uh, of course, we have a Council of South Asian Studies. Mm -hmm. But within that council, there are so many topics that could be presented for conferences. The idea of doing one on a small territory, a, the smallest state in India, one that also for hundreds of years uh, was ruled by a colonial power, uh, might not be the first choice. Uh, so I thought that coming uh, from my background, uh, having studied um, a bit of ethnography, Portuguese studies, literature in Goa, that that would be uh, an angle that no one else uh, in South Asian studies might have. And this would be a chance then to look at uh, a different part of India, mm -hmm. uh, one uh, that's not so tra perhaps so traditionally India, but that mixes um, East and Western Mm -hmm. uh, themes over the years. Right, right. Yeah, it is interesting because I normally don't think of Portuguese when I think of India. I think of, of course, um, uh, England. Mm -hmm. um, so that is an interesting aspect. So what can we take away from the conference? What were some of the conclusions that came out of it? Um, well, I think we can take away, first of all, uh, that Goa is a dynamic society uh, undergoing tremendous change. So with this globalization, we have the Goan diaspora. That was one of the sub-themes that became prominent in the conference and perhaps mm -hmm. something that we really learned, uh, that um, the diaspora of the Goan population has been going on for at least several hundred years, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in East Africa. Uh, there were Goans who worked for the Portuguese civil service all over the world in the Portuguese empire. Uh, we had a, um, even a presentation on Goans in Brazil, the places in the world that have the greatest Goan populations. And what and are the, they? Uh, Toronto. And a New York area, um, other parts of the world in Europe and so forth, uh, and Australia, of course, uh, many Goans. Uh, so the whole idea of a global connection of uh, Goan society, uh, the returning to the ancestral place, uh, the memories of what um, the culture was like in the past, mm -hmm. uh, these all become uh, prominent themes uh, for people who feel their Goan identity but who reside in various parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you so much for being here with us today and mm -hmm. sharing some of your work. Thank you. It's a pleasure. For more information about Professor Jackson and his work, please visit our website at yale.edu slash Macmillan Report. Be sure to join us again for another episode of the Macmillan Report, made possible through funding from the Whitney and Betty Macmillan Center for International and Area Studies at Yale.